I just want to make a little video wishing you a happy NHS day and uh, well <laughs> 75th anniversary being must be must be special as the cats have joined us Hello. but uh, in a way the NHS in some ways is a bit more than 75 years old I mean obviously it was born on July 5th 1948 but as it were it it didn't wasn't just there because Attlee, Bevan or Beveridge thought it was a good idea but it also came about because of a need it was born of the fire and not just of the Second World War but I'm talking of the immense poverty that had come about out due to various factors of capital and empire <laughs> and so with this great social need created by the inequality of a society where you know people were a lot less were a lot more alienated from their work a lot more alienated from the profit of their labor and a lot poorer while the rich had <laughs> massive amounts of wealth wealth extracted from the people of Britain and then used to build an empire throughout the world and world in a lot of ways the NHS was basically saying we don't want that we want a society that looks after one another you know we're all in this together so after the war through the National Health Service the welfare state they decided we're going to build back better, although they didn't use that terminology to make a better world after the one that had come before, as they said after the first war, you know, finally get around to building the homes fit for heroes. Heroes and that's why I kind of like in the Second World War. Lots of people from around the world came to help make Britain a better place. If that uh, National Health Service and the Welfare State and you know, a little while back I put up a post in the community tab commemorating the 75th anniversary of the arrival of the Windrush generation and yes, this is going to be controversial perhaps, I'm going to say that, but I'm going to say it anyway because it ought to be said. They deserve British citizenship. We put out the call, they answered the call, put their lives, lives in the Caribbean behind and came over to help make a better society. Now, if that's not worthy of citizenship, don't know what is, but then again it's a belief of service guarantees citizenship, but by and by. There's another thing as well, of course, because the NHS is in a way a lot younger as well. Because the Britain of today is not the same as the Britain of 1948. And the National Health Service has changed, developed, you know, in the heritage in, in industry, if you want to use such a coarse term, we have an idea of the difference between preservation and conservation. And conservation, we build and rebuild to make it fit the ever-changing needs and so we've also I mean here we've got mental health work being done and as we can also tell it's the doctors the technicians the nurses they are an important part but it's also about all the other people as well as we see in making the future with our future health and yeah, there'll be a link in the description if you want to take part. You have to be 18, but if you are 18 in the, and in the UK, you can take part in the research program, collecting your health date, a bit of health data here and there, and that can be then used by future scientists to help make future healthcare. And of course, grounded in the present. As we see here with Here to Talk. 
providing someone to talk to. Oh, and helping people through with the cost of living crisis. Because you see, and you might have even noticed that, hence why it's Staffordshire and Stoke-on-Trent listed here. I mean, I picked this leaflet up at church. But, because you might, some people get this impression about government welfare and welfare programs that it's like the some big state ruling from a high high office in the capital ruling down on what needs to be done perhaps part of this sort of narrative that's often spun of there being the individual with their unique identity and such po juxtaposed against the collective of will always back and forth against one another but when I see the National Health Service and what they do I see that it doesn't have to be that way and in fact it is more you know it isn't just this conflict of the individual and some greater collective in a sense it's more of a confluence as individuals from across the islands and across the world bringing their individual talents, gifts and skills and making the lives of everyone a bit better. You know, be it the technician and who operates the MRI machine. The counsellor who talks to people through their mental health crisis, the numerous voluntary organisations and other people and private doctors who work with the National Health Service in order to help make the world grow, make the outreach grow and help people where they need it, in their local communities, with their local communities. is different trusts able to focus in on what they on what's needed in their area with help and guidance from above and feedback from below i mean hey the plaster's gone now but yeah, taking some blood samples and giving that over to the to the people in our future health to help make medicine a better place in the future and well we're all kind of in this together yeah I just want to say and yeah just want to tell you guys guys America Russia China Europe Europe and don't worry and hey I may have voted remain but we got we do need to talk about this Empires are overrated. Like one group of people just grabbing everything from other people, using it to shove down other people, and just to get a bit of extra wealth here and there. But no, that's not the world we wanted. Let's build some homes fit for heroes now. With a society that works together, a community as it were so to that community I'd just like to give thanks you know, and even even if it's just in those little things being there for someone in need helping one another yeah it needs a lot of people to contribute it needs a it's a lot of work but there is power in a union and we can be that As I say, just you know, all sorts of people. Some who operate the, the machines, the GPs, nurses, doctors, pharmacists. You know, the pharmacist who can help who help someone in need find the 
all sorts of things that might that a person might need one day. You know, life-saving medicines. First ever test tube baby was born on the NHS. Or even just finding finding the proper shampoo that strop, that stops your scalp drying out. Well, to everyone who's part of our National Health Service, it was lovely having you here. <laughs>